This video will have clips of Shirley's Walk in Harbor Park and Spirit Trail. We will explain its significance throughout this video. So we would like to welcome you to the marshlands of Ladner. Marsh? Ladner? What is a marsh really? Where is Ladner? Have you heard of this region in BC? Ladner is a 30 minute drive or a one hour, 50 minute transit from the University of British Columbia. Relative to downtown Vancouver, Ladner is located southeast in the city of Delta. Delta is known for places such as the Burns Bog Delta Nature Reserve and the Vancouver Landfill. In the middle northern tip of Delta are the South Arm Marshes and Lanier. According to Statistics Canada, as of 2016, the population of Lanier is 24,825. The South Arm Marshes make up 9.37 km squared of the Delta Municipality. It is a designated provincial wildlife management area. Additionally, it is managed by the Nature Trust of BC, Ducks Unlimited Canada, and Kirkland Island Waterfall Society. There seems to be little information regarding the Kirkland Island Waterfall Society upon a search on Google, but the other management partners seem to be active with a running website. The Nature Trust of BC is a non-profit conservation organization that conserves the habitat and biodiversity of the province. Ducks Unlimited Canada wants to conserve, restore, and manage wetlands and grasslands to benefit waterfall, wildlife, and people with specific interests to ensure abundant wetlands and waterfall for generations to come. Why is protecting marshes important? Marshes are wetlands that play an important part in nature. Although places such as the Burns Bog are undervalued by the decision to place a landfill beside it, it does not mean that it is truly an unproductive space. Without wetlands, this means a decline of biodiversity. Additionally, it means greater floods, effects of drought and erosion. You may have learned about spaces that are like our kidneys, and wildlands are like these spaces. They act as a natural filter, which maintains the international image of Greater Vancouver's pristine and delicious spatial waters. We will be exploring the importance of marshes, specifically on the South Arm marshes through two parts that are accessible in Latinair. Harbor Park and Spirit Trails, and why we believe it is important to turn them into a geomarker site and also use geotourism as a method to protect, as informed by Reynaud et al. Geomorphosites are geomorphological landforms that have acquired a scientific, historical, slash cultural, aesthetic, and or social slash economic value due to human perception or expectation. We are suggesting for the self arm marshes to have a bigger emphasis on explaining and showing why its conservation is significant. It could be a place that people in the Mitchell Vancouver region can point out as an immediate suggestion for a tourist spot. The South Arm Marshes in Lander has far-reaching potential as an urban geomorphosite in the Lower Mainland. It is hard to overlook the South Arm Marshes on a map. They are a wildlife reserve sandwiched between the highly urbanized areas of Richmond and Delta, adding to their geo attractiveness and making them a significant geomorphosite for urban tourism and geomorphological heritage. The South Arm Marshes give the quiet Lander a distinctive image that is rooted in its history as a fishing village in the 19th century. The marshes have been inhabited by the Tswasan, Musqueam, and other Coast Salish peoples for thousands of years, making them a unique and culturally significant place for indigenous and non-indigenous communities in the Lower Mainland. The South Arm marshes are incredibly rich in biodiversity and geodiversity. They are home to diverse flora and fauna, which depend on the ecosystem services that the marshes provide. Geomorphologically, the marshes consist of tidal wetlands, mud flats, drainage tunnels, and uplands. A trip to the South Arm Marshes will thus allow you to see snow geese, northern pintails, and great blue herons, as well as beautiful distinct groups of landforms. Turning the marshes into a geomorphosite will lead to a greater understanding about them and their preservation. Transforming the marshes into a geomorphosite will not only add to the Lower Mainland's geomorphological heritage, but also protect the ecosystem for future generations. The city of Delta has strongly been influenced by the Fraser River. It is a child of the river, which has deposited silt and debris for approximately 8,000 years, expanding the land westward by 3 meters each year, providing a very rich and productive natural environment, but also an environment that is subject to constant geographical changes. Prior to European settlement, the Coast Salish Tawasin came to the swampy low-lying area to gather food from the sea and river. In 1868, William and Thomas Ladner were the first settlers to bring the rich Delta marshland into production by diking and draining. In 1873, a government wharf was built on land donated by William Ladner, providing access to the steamboats traveling the Fraser. 
The South Farm marshes stretch 886 hectares and primarily consists of mudflats, intertidal marshes, wetlands, islands, bogs, drainage channels, sandbars, and wetland vegetation, such as reeds, cattails, sedges, and rushes. According to the geological map of Metro Vancouver, the South Arm marshes are located in the lowlands and mainly consist of silt and clay and sand and silt. These sediments were deposited over thousands of years by seasonal floodwaters that spread across the lowlands. Sand and silt are very important for agricultural soils, which is why the Fraser River Delta has historically been known to be an agricultural community. While sand-rich deposits have moderate to high bearing capacity, this area is at high risk of liquefaction if a large earthquake were to hit. The wildlife reserve area is one of the most important habitats for aquatic birds and raptors in British Columbia. It provides wintering, migration, and breeding habitats for waterfowl, shorebirds, raptors, and many passerine species. Additionally, the marshes also provide channels that support juvenile salmon. Since the marshes are critical habitats for so many different species, it is designated as a provincial wildlife management area. Why should we consider geotourism? Geotourism, as advocated by Reynold et al., can be used as a form of protection for geomorphosites. However, in mainstream media, there are also cases of people figuring out about amazing spots in nature and its demand causing degradation of the space. This does not have to happen if there are structures put in place to show the significance of these areas rather than having a dominant image as a place for its Instagrammable values. This can be through creating funded educational tours for teachers to take their students to visit. Some other ideas include implementing social media, self-guided tours, and mobile apps. Additionally, documentaries and film play a big part in perception. Currently, there are existing activities that take place in the site. There are opportunities for hunting, bird watching, and wildlife photography. However, there could be more formal guides on these opportunities, videos on how these activities can be fun, and things to consider when you are interacting with a geomorphic site. In regards to existing material, there is currently a brochure produced by British Columbia Wildlife Watch with Delta Naturalist Society that has been digitized. It should be noted that the brochure is made with the support of the Shell Environmental Fund. The effects of climate change have become more prevalent over the years, which is why it is extremely important that we protect the marshes as it is an extremely vulnerable area. The South Arm marshes are losing their carbon sequestration capacity. The changes to the marshes that may happen due to climate change can alter water quality, water quantity, and the way habitats function. Additionally, with sea levels continuing to rise, it is putting more pressure on infrastructure such as dikes, pump stations, and flood walls. However, while wetlands are vulnerable to climate change, they can also play a role in mitigating climate change. Marshes can be a source of some greenhouse gases, especially when disturbed but they are also an important sink for greenhouse gases where carbon is stored and prevented from entering the atmosphere. It is essential that the city of Delta provide valuable ecological services that include flood and drought mitigation, water filtrations, protection from sea level rise, and carbon storage and sequestration. Not only is this area at risk to climate change, but it has also been affected by urbanization. Over the years, the preservation of the wetlands have become an afterthought in the midst of urbanization as the area has been continuously drained, paved, and filled to make way for development. Historically, more than 70% of the natural habitat has been lost to diking in the Fraser River estuary. The islands and marshes contain 25% of the remaining Fraser River estuary marsh habitat. As these habitats continue to be lost to urban development, the South Arm marshes become increasingly more important of an area to protect. The South Arm Marshes are an incredibly valuable geomorphological site in the Lower Mainland that allows for urban settlers to maintain their connection to and improve their relationship with the physical environment. Although the loss of wetlands in Canada is difficult to precisely quantify, most experts agree that they are degrading at an alarmingly rapid level. Wetlands are an important part of the Lower Mainland because of the wide variety of ecosystem services that they provide. In other words, the depletion of the South Arm marshes will lead to the loss of nesting ground for birds and the flooding of property close to the Fraser River. Numerous communities will also lose an integral aspect of their culture. Hence, protecting the marshes is a must, not a choice. Throughout our tour of the marshes, we have made tangible suggestions for how they can be turned into a geomorphosite for geomorphological heritage, tourism, as well as ecosystem preservation. 
To conclude, one of the best ways to ensure the preservation of the South Arm Marshes, its diverse flora and fauna, as well as its unique geomorphological and fluvial landforms, is by turning it into a geomorphosite to highlight their value to humans.